Um, 9-11 was, um, was a man-made attack. This was a natural disaster. And so I, have a, I had a little different sense of emotion about realizing that there are some killers out there that killed Americans as opposed to a storm. Well, Ron, now we've uh, relayed the president's comments to somebody who's right here in the midst of it all, Robert Wack, an auto mechanic in Biloxi. And, uh, Robert, I, I just explained to you what we just played about President Bush. What's your reaction? President Bush don't need to be the president no more. Because President Bush ain't doing his job. We got the whole coastline destroyed. I'm out here starving, hungry. I, I finally got me a bottle of water and able to call my mama. Robert, Robert, where do you where do you live? I mean, where, what, what's what's the problem right now? Where I do you live? Right off Porter Avenue on Judge Siegel, and I mean, my apartment's still standing, but I ain't got no hope. I'm finna leave. If I can get gas and leave, I mean. So you need you need gasoline. You're not getting gasoline. What else? The police are buying up every drop of gas that is out there. They're they're mobbing the stores and they won't let no one get no gas. I'm stuck here now because I ain't got no gas. I'm looking at that black car back there and I'm finna go get me some gas. Believe that. What I'm hearing is because it's scary is they all want to stay in Texas. Everybody is so overwhelmed by the hospitality. And so many of the people in the arenas here, you know, we're, we're under a privilege. Is it? We're feeding this those people. We have truckloads and convoys of supplies going there. We knew for several days that this hurricane was going to hit. To say that by Sunday, you'll have 30,000 National Guardsmen on, on the ground. It seems like a, a pretty long last time in terms of actually having them on site. Well, again, it's a growing and continuing disaster. Day. This is the ground truth. The only way to avoid a catastrophic problem in that Super Bowl is to have people leave before the hurricane hits. Those who got out are, are fine. Those who stayed in faced one of the most horrible experiences in their life. But that's the point. Those who got out were people with SUVs and automobiles and airfares who could get out. Those who could not get out were the poor who rely on public buses to get out. Not allow it to be said by history that the difference between those who lived and those who died in this great storm in front of 2005 was nothing more than poverty, age, or skin color. It would be unconscionable to stand by and do nothing. You didn't ready to see something that I'm not sure you're ready to see. There are people standing out there. They've been in that freaking Superdome for five days, watching dead bodies, watching hooligans killing people, raping people. That's the trap. trying to give us babies that were dying. Dangerous it was it as you walked around the streets where people, I mean, give us a sense of that. I tell you what I saw. I saw people stealing luggage. That's what I saw. New Orleans is a great city. I had a, I didn't, they said we gotta get out, it's getting too violent. When I went to the convention center, I was prepared to be, you know, mugged, shot. I got in there and the people were looking at me like, like that. These people are good people, Katie. It's not, I mean, maybe they got some freaks out there. 
but you can drop your camera crew <clears throat> into any major city in the United States and get the same thing. It's just the spotlight is on us right now. People are desperate. They have nothing. They're, they're, they're dying. They got no help. They don't know that help is out there. These people are good people. And a very, very small minority of them have gone over the edge.